get this story. There was a suburban mom got arrested because she made her son walk home a half a mile from school. This is a real story. Heather Wallace's oldest son, eight-year-old Aiden, was driving his two brothers crazy in the car as they all returned from karate one afternoon in October 2021. Wallace asked Aiden to walk the rest of the way home, half a mile, in a quiet suburban Waco, Texas, so he could calm down. For this, she was arrested, handcuffed, and thrown in jail. She was charged with endangering a child, a felony carrying a mandatory minimum of two years in prison. It really brought us into deep trauma. This is what cops do. So does this help the family? We're going to take your mom away for two years. That's, what the, that's the cop's idea. She is finally able to speak out after completing a six-month pretrial diversion program to get the charges dropped, but her arrest remains on the books, easily searchable by employers, which is disastrous for someone with a bachelor's degree in education. Here's how it unfolded. She, Aiden, her son, agreed to walk home. After all, it was something he had done many times. There are sidewalks the entire way and zero traffic. But 15 minutes later, two cops knocked on Wallace's door. Her son was in the parked patrol car. Another officer was parked across the street. A woman on one block away had called the cops to report a boy walking outside alone. What? And the cops got there that fast? And you call the cops that a boy is walking? What is wrong with white people? You call the cops because of someone is walking? The lady had actually asked Aiden where he lived, verified that it was just down the street, and proceeded to call the cops frickin' anyway. What? The cops picked up Aiden on his own block. He was on his block. Jeez. He steps away from his home, and the cops put him in his car. As they stood on her porch, the officers told Wallace that her son could have been kidnapped and sex trafficked. You don't see much sex trafficking where you are, but where I patrol in downtown Waco, we do, said one of the cops. That statement struck her as odd. They were basically admitting that this is a safe neighborhood. Yes. The officer then asked Wallace whether she would let her son walk home again now that she knew about the sex trafficking. Oh, my God. I still didn't know it was illegal, and I said, I don't know. That's when the cop replied, okay, I'm going to have to arrest you. He proceeded to do so in front of the kids, handcuffing Wallace behind her back. By this point, the cops had allowed Aiden to get out of their car and called Wallace's husband, who arrived at home. They, then they put Wallace in the cruiser. She didn't have her shoes on, but the cops told her the jail would provide a pair. It didn't. What in the fuck? And you people don't think cops are mental? What? And the, this cop, they, they do shit like this all the time because there's never a repercussion for anything they do. In the back seat, still handcuffed, Wallace was interviewed by a caseworker with the Texas Child Protective Services. There are fucking kids being abused all over this country, and this is what they're doing? All in all, it was about three hours from the time the cops showed up to the time around 8.30 p.m. that they drove Wallace to the county jail and locked her up. I'm a suburban mom. I didn't know what I was doing. I got booked at 4 a.m. The next day, Wallace's husband paid her $300 bail and they went home. When Aiden heard his mom come in, he looked up, panic-stricken. I ate your piece of cake, he confessed. I didn't know you were ever coming home. Child Services had the family agree to a safety plan, which meant Wallace and her husband could not be alone with their kids for even a second. Their mothers, their children's grandmothers had to visit and trade off overnight stays in order to guarantee the parents were constantly supervised. She obtained a lawyer who told her that if she admitted guilt, she could participate in a pre-trial diversion program that would close the case. 
On the other hand, if she went to trial and lost, she faced a minimum of two years behind bars and a maximum of 20. She took the plea deal. Her diversion program required 65 hours of community service, which Walls completed at an early childhood center. The program mandated that she only work there during the weekends when there were no kids around for her to endanger. She helped develop the center's curriculum and also did some cleaning. Meanwhile, she was forced to resign from the pediatric sleep consulting business where she worked for the same reason, child endangerment charges. There went half the family's income. She found work at a cookie store instead. I can't believe they don't name these cops. To comply with the program, Wallace also had to take a parenting class and eight random drug tests. Ironically, that meant she sometimes had to leave the kids by themselves for an hour. We couldn't afford a babysitter, she says. At the lab, Wallace had to pull down her pants and underwear in front of a supervisor. Then I'd pee into a cup while they were watching. Wallace's sister has started a GoFundMe for her. She is in debt after losing her job and paying for the lawyer and the diversion program. She also hopes to hire a lawyer to get her record expunged so that she can work with kids again. Who are these cops? But in her pretrial essay, which required her to admit guilt and remorse, Wallace thanked the officers for teaching her how wrong she was to have her son walk half a mile on a warm day in his own neighborhood. From now on, Wallace wrote, I will continue to grow more as a parent and as a person. I don't even know what to say to this story. I don't even know what to say to this story. You thought you lived in America, huh? This is what they're spending their time on. There are kids out there that need help, and they're fucking with a family. This is what cops do. This is what they do. I called a cop. I had a guy in front of my house with a gun. I called a cop. Took an hour. <laughs> so now you know why people own their own guns, A. And B, that cop was there. That kid was walking home four blocks, and the cops got called, and they they were there like that. You know why that? Because there's no crime in Waco in that neighborhood. There's no crime, and those cops don't have anything to do. So the only thing worse than a lot of crime and no cops is a lot of cops and no crime. And that's exactly what happened here. There's no crime in that neighborhood. And those cops want to get their rocks off. That's why they became cops, by the way. Cops don't become cops because they fucking give a shit about you or keeping your neighborhood safe. They become cops because they're cowboys and they get a kick out of wearing a gun and fucking with people. How do you know that, Jimmy? I don't know. Just from every cop I've ever met in my entire life. Every cop I've ever met in my entire life. Now, my friend Michael Schur at the TYT, he pretends he knows a guy who was a pilot who then became a cop because he had to make up a story on air one day, one day to try to contradict me. <laughs> but now everybody at the Young Turks sounds like me when they talk about cops. They're just they're they're always about five years behind me at the Young Turks. So that's what happens. You got a lot of cops and no crime. Hey, everybody, we're doing live stand-up shows in Los Angeles at the Two Roads Theater, December 9th, 16th, 23rd, and 30th. And also will be March 5th in Tempe, Arizona, April 21st, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and Milwaukee and Nashville in April. Those tickets will be on sale soon. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for all those tickets and become a premium member while you're there. You get all our videos unedited.